Welcome back to Goliath. Today we're going to be going over Segger Ozone and System View and using it with Zephyr. There is an associated blog post where you can see everything we're talking about here, including some of the critical bits around what you might want to add to your project, copy paste code, uh, stuff like that. So we're going to be going over one of the samples that's in the Zephyr repo, and we are actually going to be using this board here. Uh, this is the RT1060 from NXP. Uh, we like it because it's got really great ethernet on board and everything's in Zephyr already. So you can go and just start from Zephyr, select the board and build for it. It's actually really, really great there. Let's take a look at what we're gonna be going over here on the code side of things. Uh, so this is the synchronization uh, main.c and all this really does is ping pongs back and forth between a thread A and thread B. So you see thread A, we're kicking off different threads here thread B. And all we're doing is just handing off a semaphore between the two. This is a common thing that happens in real time operating systems. And this is a more intermediate level kind of video. Um, if you're not familiar with real time operating systems, Zephyr is a real time operating system, we mostly use Zephyr for the uh, networked, uh, what do you call it the kind of the ecosystem around Zephyr, right? So you could pull in all the different vendor code, we really like that all of the hardware support from all these vendors, that part's really great. But it is actually a real-time operating system underneath, which is often necessary for things like doing networking and getting IoT devices up and going. So uh, once we have this, we wanna go and build it. So I'm gonna load up my, uh, this is my window here to build. I'm gonna go and do West build MIMXRT1060 EVK. That is the thing that is on my desk here. So that's this guy here. And you see that we're just gonna be building like we are most of the time in Zephyr. Then we're gonna do West Flash. That should download it to the board here. And if we go and run the, open a terminal here, we should see once we hit reset, it's just going to ping pong back and forth between the two threads. I did change the hello world to yo world. Um, just to, you know, one of those things where you wanna make sure your code's running and uh, so yeah. Zephyr didn't put that in there. Uh, so we are running on this uh, Ethernet board here. Now we want to go and open this in Ozone. So what does that look like? So let's close up the terminal here. I'm going to open Ozone. And so this is what Ozone looks like. Not the most, so I, I can't really change the size. I'm sorry about that piece of it. Uh, but we're going to select the board we have here. We're going to hit next. We're going to select the J link, which is connected there. That's this guy here. We're going to hit next. And then finally, we're going to open the ELF file, which is the linked format of uh, executable linked format file. And you'll see that actually once we do that, we actually see the code here again. So this is a single file where you can pull out all of the source and it's all it's actually a compiled uh, binary underneath the hood. And so something like a debugger like Ozone, which is separate from you know all of the Zephyr stuff, it is a standalone program. It understands how to, to read what's going on here. So uh, let's actually quick, take a quick look at what is in the uh, project.conf. This is what was required in order to do it here. So these are some of the variables. This is actually in that blog post, like I mentioned, uh, the stuff down below, we'll talk about in a second here. So what we're going to do is we're going to just say we're going to hit start attached to running program. And we see down in the terminal, the same thing is running, we see the terminal is running down here. Now if I go and I uh, set a breakpoint, so I'm gonna hit a breakpoint here. So we, we have hit a breakpoint. Now what I want to do is go and open the RTOS uh, if to be able to see the thread aware RTOS stuff here. And I don't know, yeah, there it is set here. So this is the key piece here, set OS plugin, Zephyr plugin. This is something that's uh, native. It's built into recent versions of Ozone. You have to actually hit enter here. And now it's already set on the right side there, but if you see view Zephyr, that now shows up the thread here. So as I hit, as I hit continue on the program, it's basically just bouncing back to the same print, print K statement here. But what you see is that it's indicating that the thread is bouncing between, between thread A and thread B. And so that is what's called thread awareness. Now, another thing that's in here is uh, some of the uh, Zephyr RTT stuff. Um, sorry, the RTT is the real time terminal, I believe that's a Seger thing. And basically that that's what allows it to push commands out to this terminal thing here. And so uh, that is critical for system view and system view is basically a recorder. So as we're going through and we want to record different events happening, we can do that here. I'm going to hit start recording. We are actually paused currently. So 
nothing is being recorded here, but I'm gonna do, do a single uh, iteration. I'll hit, I'll hit continue, it'll do another loop, and we should see an event be recorded here. So we did a single loop, we see all these things happening. So if we go and dig into what's actually happening here, we see that we have recording around the thread, what its priority is, uh, as, it, as it's returning, uh, it's giving the semaphore back, basically. So the semaphore is the kind of the baton that's being handed between these two threads here. And then we see that the task is, uh, we exiting the interrupt service routine, we've stopped the task, and now we're gonna run a new task for logging. And then, then we're into the other thread. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go and actually unhook this uh, breakpoint. So this thing will just free run now. And as we do that, we see it's actually just bouncing back and forth. We see these two different colors here. It's bouncing back and forth. As I zoom out, we can see it's bouncing between thread A, this thread A is the teal, and thread B, which is kind of this army green here. And it's just bouncing back and forth between the two. And so in doing so, using system view, we can go and detect how these things are, uh, basically where we are in the program, what's taking the most amount of time as we're doing, as we're running the program. And so what we could really do is start to dig into the real-time operating system and say, oh, actually that ADC task that I was running, well, that's taking more time than I thought. And I really wanna go and optimize that code. And I can start to track that code a little bit more deeply by saying maybe the ADC thread needs to be optimized. And I can just go and hone in on that thread, go into the debugger, look at some of the stuff there. So using Seger, Ozone, JLink, and System View, uh, which I should mention as well, these are all commercial things. You will have to pay for JLink. You will have to pay for System View if you're using it commercially. Ozone, I think, is free to use if you have a, a JLink as well. So not, not free, but definitely high value. And something that we found is interesting for digging more into real-time operating systems and getting your code optimized especially for low power and as you do more and more IoT tests. So we'll have more videos here on Goliath. Uh, you can always join us over on our Discord. That's goliath.io slash Discord or our forums, forum.goliath.io. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.